this I really invite you to contemplate, the contradiction between doing God's will, getting enlightened, being free, and then wanting things to be fitting in a non-generous frame. This is, there's a complete contradiction. They go 100% into opposite direction. Okay, generosity. Generosity in the context of karma yoga. Yes, generosity in um, in karma yoga. Somehow karma yoga um, rests on this abundance of generosity. There is this um, feeling of abundance from which karma yoga comes out and towards it, it goes. You see, when we when we live from this place of generosity, we um, have this inward assumption that we have resources. It's somehow, you cannot be generous without assuming that you have. When you are in a place where you are tired, you have to do extra hours, there is something urgent needed, you normally think that at five o'clock you have no more energy, let's say you finish at five, and then at 5.30 something urgent happens and takes another three hours and so forth. And if you meet this kind of breaking of your limits with the opposite of generosity, with scarcity, I don't have, and then either you don't do it, or you do it with the belief that you have so little energy, you will require medical care at 7.30 because you have to move some pillows around or click some things on the computer because you have no energy time. Now is your, I consume the screen, screen time because I am exhausted. If you do from that place of scarcity, it eats you up inside. If you do it and if you don't do it the wall the limitation on the level of energy gets thicker and thicker but if on the contrary you say well normally I finish at five but I, I have so much so much so much in me I know that I haven't discovered and I'm doing Kama Yoga for a bigger purpose and therefore bigger energies will manifest through me. I have faith, even I haven't seen them yet. And you manifest with this burst of generosity, you don't have the same energy you had at four o'clock when you were doing your duties. You have much more energy because you discover you're out of your limit. Yeah, because we the routine creates a certain power but also creates a certain limitation. And when you have to do more than your routine, there is a cracking open. And if you do more than your routine with a state of generosity, the more you do, the more you discover how much power you have. And both of us, and already many of you I have seen, have encountered this. And very often in the context of Karma Yoga, spiritual masters would deliberately create such situations of super effort and hopefully inspire their disciples to have this state of generous self-giving and with it, they would become extremely empowered. Very often, we would meet these situations, we had to close a construction project, the snow would come, we would work not until 5, but until 10 p.m., very intense physical work. And the joy of the people, because everything was done in this generosity. Then we would make the most jokes when we work. Then we would be the most happy. Then we would come home the most radiant because of this wonderful state of generosity. And it's not just the limitation of energy. It is the limitation of what I have to myself and what I have to give. Well, if I have so much to give, I probably have so much inside. And the more I have to give, the greater the faith that I have so much resources, 
and love and energy and time. Of course I have time. I have so much time. And then faith is the bridge. If you believe you have, you have, brother. Oh, sister, you have. And if you believe it's gone, it's gone. And if you believe you can't give a millimeter more than what you plan to give, your system will collapse then. As soon as generosity ends, poverty and scarcity begins. And people who have this continuous flow of generosity, they have abundance. They cannot but have abundance. It is a, a natural state of being for such people. And people who believe in their limitation, this is mine, this I give, this I get, that's why I give, because I get, and there is zero generosity in their lives, they only receive from the universe a little bit to survive, because maybe one day they'll wake up or die. One of the two will happen for sure. But if you believe in generosity, you don't just receive power for your body to survive and you have some money in the bank account for health insurance. If you believe in generosity, you will be empowered proportionally with your generosity to give to as much as your generosity is. And if you have 10 units of generosity, you are strong like 10 people, creative like 10 people, efficient like 10 people. And if you have a hundred units of generosity, you can do what a hundred people can do. It comes from that. With generosity, abundant. It is somehow the essence of karma yoga. Real karma yoga is done inside this, is a trance state in which something greater than me loves some people that I know and some people that I don't know and is manifesting through me and it is generous and I don't mind, I let it happen through me. This is the joy of generous Kama Yoga and if there is only two, three, four people like that in a community, the entire community is with twinkling eyes. And if it's a community of 20 or 30 built like that, it is paradise on earth. It is like it's 20 people, but you have resources for 5,000. Because everyone is generous and is growing exponentially. And then you can feed the world from there. This is essentially this attitude of, of great generosity. It comes with this great faith. Yeah, you said the um, essential thing that uh, it's most important to understand generosity in general, but also in, uh, in the context of Karma Yoga is how much it is linked with faith. If you think you can be faithful and, and you're not generous, you're not getting what it means to have faith. It, you know, people think usually, oh yeah, sure, I'm generous for this part. You know, it's usually like, well, yeah, I have this, this is what I need, and then I have this extra, and then with this I'm generous with the extra. But if you look, for example, how the saints and, and great sages and so forth, how they would operate, they would give from whatever they would have. It would not be limited to something specific, like the story of St. Martin who cuts, the, who cuts his coat into two halves to give to another person or so many stories of Francis and his brethren who basically just shared whatever. Oh, look, this person doesn't have shoes. I have shoes. I can give my shoes. I don't mind not to have shoes. So generosity is, is way more than giving when you feel inclined. It is to continuously search for what you can give. And very often what we discover when, when we start doing that is how much resources we actually have available. It's, it's somehow like um, if you have a, um, a water uh, tap and you have it open just so that it drips, you will, 
you know, you still have the whole watering system of the city behind that tap, but what comes out of it is, is a little drop. And then that is somehow what you will feel if you give in this measured way where you decide what you give, then you become this dripping water tap. Well, the water tap is meant to be open and shower the entire uh, city with whatever might be needed. But it doesn't get to that because it insists to be constipated. Yeah, that's when we are not generous. When we insist, no, these are my resources. This is what I have. And this is what we're like a constipated, clogged up tap that is not getting to fulfill its purpose, that is not getting in touch with what it is meant to do. A tap is meant to offer water. If you are not offering water, you're not a good tap. If you're just dripping water, you're like, okay, at least something is coming up, but it is nothing in comparison to what is possible. When we become generous, we become that which we were made to be. That which is possible through us can only happen when we become generous, when we start to give it up. When we don't give it out, we cannot become what we were meant to become. It's just as simple as that. You think you can get liberated and you, you don't want to get generous? Forget about it, it's not possible. You think you can acquire a karma yoga state in which the universe, the universe is operating through you and you are not generous? That doesn't work out at all. And this lack of faith that lies in a lack of uh, generosity is basically you're putting your, your arrogant little mind over what God is inviting you to do. And that's how it kills the whole story of Kama Yoga when you're not being generous. Because you think with your little completely ridiculous calculation of what you think, with the little you know, you come there and arrogantly say, this is my little equation of what I have. What are you doing? You are part of the universe. You're a wave on top of the ocean. Yeah, I'm this little wave and I can only give this little part of my waviness. No, you are an ocean. It's just the shape happening there. And the, the contradiction, this I really invite you to contemplate, the contradiction between doing God's will, getting enlightened, being free, and then wanting things to be fitting in a non-generous frame, this is, there's a complete contradiction. They go 100% into opposite direction. This is important to contemplate. If you want to acquire any godly attribute, you want to be courageous, you want to have faith, you want to be kind, you want love, you want complete fulfilling errors, you want greatness, you want triumph, any godly thing, it can only be acquired in combination with generosity. It cannot be thought otherwise. One thing that I notice is when people start moving forward on the spiritual path and they start to practice and they start to get something out of their practice, they start to have results, they will get stingy. They will get petty with the way that they practice. Why? Because the ego is trying to survive within the framework of a spiritual path. And the ego will always do that by trying to frame evolution in an egoistic way. Evolution, divine, godly, profound, liberating evolution is not possible in an egoistic frame. You think you can forever sit there and construct your little sadhana for the little things that you want? Yeah, you can on the first three millimeters of the path. The rest of the 100 miles up, not possible, not accessible to you, because you are busy arranging your little ways. It doesn't work. It's a contradiction per se. And of course, because we are so much socialized to look at everything through the lens of the ego and the mind, we will have this continuous, we think it's a brilliant idea to motivate ourselves to grow by little ego ideas. Oh yeah, but I want to be free, so then I should love. <laughs> this is a contradiction in itself. Love so that you will be free. How about that? You know? Oh, 
yeah, I will, I will obtain focus because then I can work efficient and then I will be better than other people. What are you doing? No, become everyone. Then you will work like 5,000 people as efficient. When you become that completely available vessel to whatever God wants to manifest, who are we to think that we know so well? Oh, I need to buy this for me, and then I need to arrange my meals like that, and my time like that, and my practice like that. And then... Don't you think that the creator of the universe has a perfect plan for you? Already prepared, every day, every second, perfectly arranged so that every second of every day you have an opportunity to get liberated? Don't you think it's that way? No, but we rely on the living constipated, scared of legalistic arrangement of things and we think they are so smart about it. And that kills the path. Eventually, it can propel you forward for some time, maybe even for some years. But karma yoga, not possible through that. You'll be working, helping, that's good, it's a good thing. You might be doing some seva, that's good. But karma yoga, is to completely merge and become a tool of God. And the tool of God is generous, because God is generous. He will move you around and make such brush strokes with you and paint amazing pictures in this world through your actions. But for that, there needs to be an availability to offer. It cannot just be about what little, you know, John and Jane and James and whatever other names with J want to acquire. And also all the other names that are just stories that we tell of ourselves. When we remove that story, we make space for God to manifest. Then we will have a lot of faith. We will acquire all the amazing qualities of God just by becoming that open vessel, open generous vessel that the godly grace can come to. There is a fire in the heart. If you want to know, if you need to renounce a bit of practice to do some karma yoga or a bit of karma yoga to do some practice, there is a fire in the heart. There is a fire in the heart that doesn't believe in limitations. And if you are burning with that fire, that fire will guide you. It will become clear. And if that fire is not burning, make it burn. It, it somehow comes out of there. There is, I mean, Blandine was trying with this uh, finger movements. Yeah, you notice she did this finger movements. <laughs> it's everything very, very small. Yeah, this is the absence of this. Yes, exactly. This is the absence of the fire. So the um, uh, calculative side, imagine you have two friends, okay? Uh, calculative Sven and fire in the heart Sven. And they're trying to decide where to go. And calculative Sven is going Fine, you heard all the tea. There was a 100 teas there. And then fire in the hearts then, he just grabs the other one and he says, I know where we're going, come, we're going, we're going there, we're going, and it's going to be amazing, and it's, whoa, we're going there. And then you will find, you will find yourself balancing these two. Yeah, it, it is coming, you know, the kingdom of heaven is taken by storm. Is not taken by bored nerds. Yeah, it's not. This is not the biblical quote. The kingdom of heaven is taken by bored nerds, which have pre-calculated their journey to the kingdom of heaven and have arrived there slowly but surely. <laughs> no, it's taken by storm. Have a stormy attitude, and you will find the right proportion. Yeah, it, it's a madness that will bring sanity. It is through madness, the joy of madness, the joy of spiritual madness, the freedom of it, the drunkness of it, that will um, 
give you the, the balance there. When I started doing this eight hours of practice, one of my friends told me, look, with your health and the school, we teach, I don't know what, 11 or 12 classes a week and all the administration and so forth. It sounds to me very stressful. And I was like, yeah, he's my friend. It's, it's true, it's stressful. I was just doing it for some weeks. So I decided to go and pray. And I prayed very intensely. Can I do a little bit less? Yeah, 15 minutes less. So, so since then, I'm doing, I'm doing 15 minutes less. And it's, it's fine. It's fine. I discover sometimes I need less sleep. But I see that in the end of the day, week, month, the tasks are fine. They are done. I come prepared enough for the classes. And the tapas I finish every day. And I do all the stuff needed for my health. And have a wonderful couple time there. Even speak to my mom once a week. It's going. Yeah. But it's not, I didn't think about, okay, I need to do eight hours. How does my schedule look and so forth? My heart was on fire. I moved from four and a half, five hours to eight. It was difficult. Now it's not difficult. Now I'm already thinking, what can I do more? Because I, I seem, I feel I'm a bit too comfortable. I need to do some extra sacrifice. But it didn't come, and I didn't know how my schedule, and still I sleep this, almost the same, not exactly the same, but almost the same. And the school has the duties for me the same, and still it's working. You see, implicit in this, and I, I know that you, you're maybe not necessarily you know, meaning it that way, but implicit in, in what you're asking is again a lack of faith, which is completely normal, it's not specific to you, but we all have it. It's like... No, no, but I, I will just plan a little bit. I will just plan a, a little tiny bit. Just a little, you got little bit. The, the fingers, the fingers are back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but when you, you see, the universe is structured perfectly. There is nothing for you to fix. You know, the, yes, it's, it's nothing wrong with of wanting to obtain a state of balance. That is very, very good. But focus on that. Focus on being balanced now, being balanced now, being balanced now. You don't need to think about it. You obtain a state of balance now. And then you will see that it is very possible to have sometimes less sleep. And the universe is always generous and will balance it out. You will not not sleep forever. You know, you will have maybe some nights where you need to cut short because you need to arrange some things and some stuff came up and that needs to be taken care of and so forth. But the, the universe always balances out and will always create time for you to then rest, to catch up, to do that. It will always happen exactly in the way that it is needed. And somehow, I just want to point out that you, you need to make also an active effort of obtaining that uh, vision, that perspective. A perspective that looks for godly balance here, now, and that doesn't um, think that it that you know that in this chaotic universe now I have to come with my smart mind and, and arrange things, but to understand okay yes I can make a good effort to have a good overview of what's going on there's nothing wrong with that but then it comes to faith the faith comes for the things that I don't know and that I can't control and where I just need to be um, allowing myself to be mystified for what is happening next for what God is inviting me to next and you may be surprised if you open your heart he might throw another 50 things on your plate and that will be what brings you to bliss and what brings you to inner accomplishment you see so I want to invite you to zoom out and to look for the for that attitude of complete faith and of understanding that we can never know as good as the great unknown knows They are interwoven. Are they the same or different things? More the same. Yeah, the generosity and the law of occult giving, they are interwoven. The lecture that we gave is actually 
could have been also about the law of occult giving. They are completely interwoven. This and generosity is an attitude that you need in order to work with the law of occult giving. Yes, and real generosity would include this abnegation and enthusiasm, which, which are the ingredients of the law of occult giving. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content on spirituality, Tantra and more. And if you want to sign up for our online classes or for our retreats, you can see our website on the description below.